From the Akistats Arena at Caesars Southern Indiana, welcome to the 2023 Derby City Classic and the 24th edition of the Pocket Billiards All-Around Championship. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> Pool's most exciting event is proudly sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramith. And we'd also like to express our appreciation to our associates from Outsville and from Master Chalk, and recognizing our great tournament direction team from Bad Boys Billiards Productions. Once again, our thanks to Caesar Southern Indiana for hosting us for over a decade and to each and every one of you out there and those who have come once again to be part of the DCC family for being so loyal to this event and making it the most exciting and prestigious event in professional pool. Okay, we're staying in the one pocket division for another couple of rounds, uh, a couple of matches. We're still in round number three. 429 players began, approximately 275 remain. Let's get right to player introductions. First gentleman from Poland. He's a former European nine ball champion. And just last night, he came oh so close by finishing a runner up in the Derby City Bigfoot 10 ball challenge. A great player sponsored by Predator and Erg Bjeren. Please welcome Konrad Ustashen. Thank you. His opponent's from Columbia, South Carolina. He's a former Space City Open one pocket and all around champion among, among his list of accomplishments. And he's sponsored by Lomax Q's and Hustlin. Plays out of Mr. Q's in Atlanta, known as the Beast. It's Josh Roberts. All right, gentlemen, go ahead and lag if you will. Thank you very much. We're going to send it up to the comm box to Mark Wilson and special guest, Corey Duell. Take it away, Mark. Hello and welcome, pool fans. One Pocket Action is on tap, coming to you from Caesars Palace in southern Indiana. I'm Mark Wilson, and here to provide expert analysis is the Prince of Pool, Corey Duell. Corey, any opening thoughts here about this match? Ah, uh, well... It should be a really good match, actually. Uh, I mean, Josh is savvy one-pocket player, and uh, Conrad is just such a straight shooter and just a talented pool player in general. So uh, I expect it to be a good match. Um, TV table, I feel like, plays uh, should be playing pretty slick. I think it's pretty new cloth in it. They brought, brought it in. Uh, right. Well, they just finished a 10-foot yesterday, so it must be brand, brand, new. brand new. So that always makes for usually a pretty quick match in one pocket, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. Roberts has won the lag. He'll be breaking. He's breaking to the left-hander's side of the table. Breaking from not off the rail, but about a diamond in. That helps to prevent that six ball from leaking out corner ball. Should somebody make a ball on the break, the rack starts over. That doesn't count. And in the event that there's a negative score by both players, they just reduce that total, so somebody always has zero. Those are the amended rules. It doesn't seem like there's an easy uh, bank here or and get rid of that four ball. I mean, you couldn't even fault him for conceding the four. Oh, and look wow, at this look shot. at this shot. Yeah. Just, uh, Cradle wow, made that shot. look really easy. Nice, uh, Karam just to, just to go ahead and make the four. And, uh, wow. That looked like something you might do. I'm still half asleep, but I didn't <laughs> even see that shot. He made it look routine. Yashishin has tremendous pocketing power from all over the table and a great draw stroke. I mean, just effortless power with his draw stroke. And he's, uh, well, he finished second in the 10 ball on the 10-foot table, so you know he's hitting the balls clean. Yeah. I think he'll try and, I don't know if he'll just try and bank the three or maybe come around underneath the three here. Okay, that yeah, looked like he was trying to go underneath of it. Okay. I don't see any more offensive shots, and, and he's going to need to do something with the three ball. Um, 
kind of landed a little funny, honestly. Mm hmm. Uh, just going to tick off the 13, the 8. Okay, well, at least Josh gets a shot. I think he can bank that five ball straight back in his pocket. Well, he's going to open balls on his side. That's not a bad move either. Now he's back to looking at the five. I think he's looking at the eight, ten. Bank towards his hole. Yeah, five and go up table. Hit it nice. Just see that that ball didn't twist very much. It might. I thought it might hit the third three ball. And there's not many combinations out of the stack towards Conrad's hole. Conrad's a fast player. Ooh, he overspun that. And uh, the slick table, I think, got him there. It didn't play quite, quite the same as the mm -hmm. tables on the outside. And maybe a little bit that way on the five ball bank for Josh, too. It didn't grab much on the end rail when he was yeah, kind of Yeah, kind of slid. It. Yeah, it's going to take them a little bit to get used to the way this claw's playing. All right, well, Josh has a shot here. And even though you're down in the score, on this slick table, you're not really worried about it. Because if you get a shot and get the balls open, eight and outs are a pretty good possibility. So... Oh, yeah, the slick table got him there. That ball, the cue ball kind of slid off the 14, and it caused him to cut it a little more than he thought. Also, probably these guys' first match, too, of the day. I wonder if he'll bank this into the stack. It looks like the eight might carry him off the two. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of play it into the 13, play the three into the bottom of the 13, where the three could go over there, too. Boy, that'd be great if he could hit the stack and go down. Yeah, yeah. like this. Yeah, see, the three what went right shot. in. What a shot. Josh sees all those shots. That's why I don't like playing Josh. <laughs> He's tough. I think the only shot here is the 15. And the problem is, if you don't make it, you're going to play shape on the eight, but the eight's an easy cross bank. Right. Yeah, you're going to have the so firepower. Really, this is like almost a do or die here. Make that. See, now look at the stacks wide open. He might have left him straight where the, it might be a kiss bank on this eight. We'll see if he's able to cross it. It's, sometimes it's a little tougher. Like these shots, you can cross them on a on the outside tables because yeah. they bounce a little more. But sometimes on the slick table, it gets a little harder to beat mm -hmm. the kiss. You know. We'll see if he's going to try the bank. Yeah, it looks like a double kiss to me. Yeah, me too. Real problematic. That's a little bit fortunate for Josh to leave it like that. Right. Here we get a look at this shot. Yeah, really cool shot. Let's see where the eight goes. Okay, so the eight was heading low. That wasn't going to go, it didn't look like. So the three, three ball was a... What a, what a shot that was. So here it looks like, for me, you can kick at the 15 and the 2. Mm -hmm. The 9-2 off the 13 could head towards your hole, but if you don't stick right on the 15 and, and the 2 doesn't go, you might leave a bank, I guess. Yeah, you need to slip up on top of the stack, too. Yeah, they're yeah. just going to... It looks like from here, they'll probably just bunt most of the balls up table, especially Conrad should want to do that because he's leading. And that should favor Conrad, too, a little bit, the up table game, if he knows the up table game a little bit, because I feel like the up table game is a shot maker's game, more long banks and long shots.
Yeah, I don't know how much patience that uh, Yashashim would have for an up-table game, which would figure that, you know, help the more experienced one-pocket player. Yeah, he's not going to have as much experience as Josh, but uh, I think it was... I think it was Shane was playing a, a savvy one pocket player. I, f I forget who it was. It was a really experienced one pocket player, and they were playing like a one ball, one pocket game. And uh, he ended up figuring out that he was the favorite because it was all long shots that he was shooting. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He ended up figuring out that that that, that was a uh, an advantage. Good bank there. That's nice. Just going to back cut the 14. Not towards the hole, just kind of towards the 9. Just so he doesn't lose the cue ball. Some people try and play that towards the pocket, and then the cue ball slides out, and you leave the 11. Or Yeah. Yeah. He just wanted to get one down toward the bottom rail. Looks like the 10 could bank, like slow bank the 10, and it's a little risky, but the 9 blocks the banks on the 14 and 11. As long as he played the cue ball good into the 8. Well, he, doesn't, he doesn't there. leave much. He doesn't leave much. I kind of like the 15 here. Yeah, then you can let the cue ball get all the way to the far end of the table while putting the 15 on the 9. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get the 15, or if you can get the cue ball kind of the to the bottom rail and up around maybe second diamond, so the 11 will block everything. But I guess he's going with 11 here. Maybe into the 10? No. Nope. Yeah, I think oh. it was the 14 was the oh, issue. stopped it behind the 14. That right. was a good shot, yeah. Stopped it behind the 14. Yeah, very good. Protected the 11 Better. ball. Better shot than the one I was looking at. It is one thing that uh, the beast is not going to turn, uh, make shot selection errors very often. Yeah, that was a good shot. Got him in a pretty good trap here. Mm -hmm. I think you got to kick two rails. I mean, he could maybe do something up table, but I like kicking under the nine. Two rails and yes. try and freeze on the 11. Willing um, to take a foul simultaneously. Yeah, you're probably going to take a foul. But He's looking at cutting the 10 ball, which is, I mean, it looks impossible to me, but um, he what he might also be able to do is bank the two rail, bank the 15, and follow the cue ball up table and leave like a long combination. And sometimes that, that can... Uh, I don't really like that shot because he didn't get anything on his side. If he did, if he would have banked 15 two rails down and put the cue ball up table, it would have been okay because now he's putting pressure on Josh right. and Josh has to move a ball. Right. Right here, Josh doesn't have to do much. He can almost just play cue he ball. He can almost off the 15, fire at the 12-11 right. and and uh, it's almost free. You can also rub the 15 over towards your pocket and just try to get the cue ball underneath the 10. That's actually really good, yeah. You just play all cue ball. Forget trying to make a ball here. Try to yeah. play the cue ball yeah, like touching that. the 10 here, and that's going to be powerful. Yeah, I like that. It's just on a up. little short. Get on up. Not, a short. Yeah, another foot. Boy, he, it's really devastating. Yeah. It looks like he can play the 15 11. And, t and take the 11, two rails into mm -hmm. the 10 ball. Yeah. And kind of stop the cue ball behind the nine, blocking. Um, I don't know if he sees it yet. Well, the one thing with that, uh, when you play the combination 10, 11, that really stiffens up that 11 ball quite a bit. So you have to be careful with double kissing it there. And it yeah, wasn't. Just like yeah, that. That's good. Oh, that wow. That's good. Super and, good shot. And the 10 got in a spot where it didn't leave them any bank. That was pretty good. Exceptionally good from where he was at. So now Josh, you can kind of roll up on the, if you roll up on the 10 slow, you're going to leave the bank on the 9. Mm -hmm. It could be a funny bank if you, if you leave him jacked up, but 
he could also go two, go one rail off the bottom rail and, and kick that 10 out a little firmer. Okay, he just decided to nudge on the 9. Now, now Conrad can just... I think he can just touch up on the 8 and might be able to leave Josh hooked without leaving too much behind the 14. Yeah. I don't know if he can, just, if he can do that. Well, I think that's what he's looking at. Well, he was trying oh, to use he the just 12. Left, he left a bank, though. See these banks... On a slick table, that eight looks pretty inviting. Especially when you can play the cue ball over towards the 15 and, lead, you know, kind yeah. of double them up on the 11. Problem is, if you make the eight, uh, oh, I think you can see the 10 to just move it, maybe. You can also go off the nine and get under the 10. Trying to protect the ten there. I think he was trying to slide the cue ball over a little bit more and get and get yeah. under under those balls. Yeah, yeah. But Josh can move it out of the way. Good job there, getting the cue ball to settle in on All the right. end rail. Well, Josh got rid of that ball. It took him a few shots, but he got rid of the ball. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, Conrad had an opportunity there. If he could have hit a couple of those shots a little different, he could have mm -hmm. made a little more out of that situation. But I don't know if you've ever heard Josh Roberts do one pocket commentary, but I was really impressed with. Uh, I, I, think I, I, I know have, he yeah. knows the game, but yeah. he expresses it well. So yeah, it's really worth listening to if anybody else gets a chance. Yeah. I think they're in a situation where they're kind of pushing them up table again. Okay, I got that one down pretty close, that one. I like playing these, you know, into the other ball. So you play this into the 11 and move two balls. Maybe the 13 comes back over, you know, like mm -hmm. that. And the 10-12 doesn't look like it, it goes in Conrad's hole, so mm -hmm. Josh wouldn't want to move those. Kind of looks like Josh has a... He's looking at the bank on the 5. Does the 14 go past the 10? The 11 goes, so I think he's going to bank this 5. Oh, he hit it really good, too. Just slid a little bit long. Good. But he got the cue ball up pretty good. And issued now, the threat there by his now pocket. Now, see, sure. I kind of like this. I kind of like shooting the 14 down here and follow the cue ball over and cover where, he, where Josh can't make the 5 because of the 10, 12. And then if Josh were to move the 14, then, then Conrad would have a bank on the 5 there. They shot too fast. Yeah, this is going to be a fast-paced uh, play, I think. I don't think yeah. either one of them. Well, there's another bank on the eight now, if he wants it. Josh is looking to play in the beard on the 12 ball back towards his pocket. Oh, yeah, that's that's nice. That would have been a nice shot. Yeah, he did, it wasn't quite right because he did take a look at it. He looked at it. Yeah, maybe it's going near the side pocket. And I think the, how hard you'd have to hit it, the 10's going into the 13, and he's not sure what's going to happen, or the 11, I mean. Yeah, another thing mm -hmm. to think about is that they're, they're on a shot clock, so, you know, a lot of times they don't think them through that much. They just go with pretty simple move, which can prolong the game, too, if it gets a little too simple. What was it? Tony Chohan said. Said all these guys are doing are, are moves that 
don't make the game move in a direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just uh, nothing moves. Like the game doesn't progress. How about, sh how about shooting on the 10 and bump the 12 towards the hole and, and try to freeze on the 10? Yeah. 12 kind of hits the 11. But yeah, I guess you wouldn't... I don't like moving those because they block banks. And it might not be conducive to sticking to the 10. It looks like there's a hint of an angle there. Yeah, it might not stick. But if it doesn't... I guess if it doesn't stick, the 12's going to go over. Maybe you leave a bank or something. And cut the... Okay, just made one. I wouldn't say this is overly aggressive here. This match. No, not at all. There's definitely respect for each player's ability here. They're not shooting wide open. Is he going to cut bank this? Is that the idea? Put the 13 down by his pocket, yes. Yeah, that's a really good shot. That ball really slid long. Yet again, an outer table probably wouldn't let it go that long. But mm -hmm. New cloth here. I think, I feel like there's a lot of shots that Josh knows he could probably shoot, some aggressive shots. But I feel like he's not choosing to be that aggressive. He might just be waiting for Conrad to make a mistake. Because he, maybe he feels like Conrad might not know the game that well. Mm -hmm. It yeah. seems like Conrad's playing, some, playing pretty standard shots. True that, but uh, they've also been kind of numbered, you know, because there's been a couple times where it looked like he wasn't quite as experienced as Josh with... How'd this work out? Good. Another thing to think about is it's also a race to three. So if you take a couple chances, that could be your tournament, you know? Oh, yeah. In a hurry. It's a little quick. Oh, look at that. Right under the... Wow, that's a really good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Josh going to just touch up on this. Hope, hopefully, hoping he gets a little different angle. Something that he can clip off of and go under the nine on his next shot. Maybe mm -hmm. a couple shots later. Just tie stuff up and uh, rearrange everything a little bit. You know, and you see now he can three, thin the 13 maybe with some spin and, and come down. Mm -hmm. Or if he doesn't like this. Maybe he'll thin him again, leave him under the 14, 15, or. Right. If he gets really jammed up, he'll probably take a scratch and, and kick down. Yeah. I think this combo goes. 14, 15 combo and draw the cue ball over there. Aim it up real nice. The pockets are pretty big. I would go for this thing, I think. The other thing, he banked the five. Yeah. He banked the 13, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was a little bit of a mental error by Josh. He's in a little bit of a jam here. He can probably cut the 13 over towards his pocket and go under those balls. I don't know if he can make it, but he'll get it close. Look at this shot. That was nice. Don't go in. Yeah, I don't think he wants to make it. He made it. <laughs> Great shot. Yeah, but he jammed himself up. You know, I don't know if we can grab the overhead here, but if we can, maybe there's a way to go off the 14 here yeah. and get down. But you, uh, Yeah, I like that. Well, maybe. <laughs> Okay, and maybe oh, he it just, wasn't there, too. Did he but hit the 14 or just did. take a scratch? 
Oh, maybe he did he take did. a scratch. He did. It. No, I think he. Yeah, I thought he rubbed it. Now the combinations plays really good now because it, I, you, I I have to shoot the combination. Well, yeah, you can score or you can leave it right next to your pocket. You don't hit it hard, but you definitely want to get it down there. Oh, too hard. Yeah, too hard. It'd have been way better if he yeah. leaves it down there near that pocket. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. That was an opportunity. Right. Now Josh can kind of get away here. He can yeah, bank the, get him back out of there now. Bank that nine, blast yeah. him out of there. Yeah. Against a player like Josh, uh, Conrad's had, had two opportunities where he started moving the balls and getting them close to the hole. And it, you need to capitalize on those against a player like Josh. But, you're not going to get that many of those opportunities, I don't think. you and I, yeah, exactly right. You and I have had a little more opportunity to play more one pocket than Conrad clearly has. <clears throat> we understand the value of just get it down there by the pocket. Forget trying to make the combination. <laughs> they just get the ball down there. If it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, just leave it down there. Just don't let Josh out of the trap. Yeah, I think the big thing is that, ooh, that ball slid on him. He no. left a bank here. Yeah. The, the big thing is protecting the balls. When, when you move balls towards your pocket, you got to protect those balls. And Conrad has left right opening a couple times where Josh was able to get the balls out. Okay. Well, that was a good shot, and he did what he needed to do, get the ball right by the pocket. Yeah. I think, he'll, I think Josh will kick this one. Maybe near the pocket. Oh, he's got two rail it out of there. Oh, double kiss. That was a little funky. That looked a little funny there. Well, this plays right into uh, Yashushin's wheelhouse here is if you give him shots to shoot. Yeah, but, I mean, which one's next? No, exactly. There's Well, it's 14 know. bank, maybe, or, you know. Well, I'll tell you what he might be able to do. He might be able to shoot the 15 and go between the side pocket and the 5 and try and get, play on the 5 with inside English. If he makes that, then he can bank the 14, bring the cue ball over possibly for the 9, or bank the 9. Um, you know. He's just banking the 14 now, okay, I guess. Okay, so he's going to bank the 14 now. That's good. Because he can protect this ball with the... The 10 and 12. Hit it nice. Now, bank to 5. This one's going to go really long. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure it doesn't hit the 11 and 8. Well, it's hit well. Good speed. Might, allow, it might be a cross bank for Josh. I don't know if he can beat the kiss on this one. And the five's really close to the rail, which sometimes he'll double kiss it. I just kick it out. No, he did. Oh, he hit it beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. What a shot. Beast. Now. Two rail on the nine. He can also play the ten and try and stop behind the twelve. But you need a. You need to roll the cue ball forward about an inch. So if you stop it, it's no good. He's going to two rail the nine. Now I think he bumped those balls. Oh, hit that nice. Wow. And, and got the good. cue ball safe, yeah. too. Good on both accounts. Yeah, that was nice. Nice work there. 5-5 five, five is our score. Well, it's going okay. to be a well, kick, right? Yeah, I'll tell you what you could do here if you want. You could roll up on the 10 and freeze the cue ball and take a scratch. Oh, he could see the kick at it. But if he was in a jam, he could have rolled up on those balls, took a scratch. Josh Bank, 9 in. I'm surprised he didn't bank one of those balls over there. I guess he still doesn't want to move them. Mm-hmm. He likes those sitting there. They're blocking all the banks for Conrad.
Okay. I'm not sure if that 11 cut, if you can cut the 11 in from here. It'd be pretty thin. But maybe. He's looking at it. He is. I'll just the 10 on his side, protect it. Conrad just drawing the cue ball to the end rail. Now, if he would have got that froze, it would be a good, good situation. But now Josh can come off this eight. If Josh gets the cue ball froze, yeah. Now Conrad's in a little bit. Right. He's going to get the worst of this exchange, most likely. <laughs> Getting distance. Things are tangled up, so. No worse for wear now. Tell you what you do, kick at the 11 right here. Got to kick the 11 up to the hole. Play the cue ball behind the 10 and 8. So this well, is pretty good here. Getting the cue ball down here froze. Wow, cut that ball in from there. And left a shot, look at that. Overhit that one. I think he wanted to hit it a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And it just added some pace to the cue ball. Now Josh, I think he can cut this in and go two rails across for the 10, I believe. Yeah. Super long bridge by Josh. Hit it good. Oh, he did hit it good. Look at the pace. Did it get to the hole? Now. All well, right. This well. This isn't too bad. There is another rule, though, I was going to bring up that you can't spike the cue ball off the table and foul. Oh, you can't fly it off. Right. No. You really? You have to foul it in. Yeah. You have to follow it in. Is that only a TV table rule, or is that for... I think it's for the whole tournament. For the whole tournament. It was that way at the International, and I read the rules the other day, so yeah. I don't think I'm confusing it, the whole tournament. Okay. I try to read the rules every time just because, but then it gets confusing when you've had a lot of rules in your head, but I'm pretty sure you can't fly it anymore, which I like. Mm -hmm. It looks so amateurish. Well... I think I asked somebody, I was going to fly it off the table, and I asked the player, I said, I'm going to fly this off the table. You want to just spot them up so I don't break something in the pool room? And they said, oh, okay, let's just spot them up. Yeah, maybe they could do that. You could just take an intentional foul and just... Spot it, but yeah, that's that. That makes it really difficult because a lot of times you get a weird angle where, right, you can't even get the ball out. Exactly, and and now if you fly it off the table, <laughs> you get to keep that ball. It doesn't spot up on a foul. The player that you pocketed the ball for oh, keeps wow. it. So yeah, yeah, so if it's your out ball, he, he loses. The that's game. good to know. I wouldn't have known that. I would have. I would have. That would have cost me a game probably. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's going to cost some your opponent the game when he tries it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You really can't do that. Good thing I came in here. That's, that's valuable. Okay, so Josh needs one. Get the balls out of play on the slick table. Conrad needs to get the balls up table. And that was a good shot, though. He got him on his side. Yeah, he opened him up and got him on his side. That was good. That was, that was an awesome shot. Josh is just going to keep the pressure on, keep putting the ball down here. I bank the eight if I'm Conrad. Mm-hmm. Get him, get him down here. Hit it nice. Uh, 
Now Josh can bank this over to the 11, or he can kick it up table. I think kicking it up table is dangerous on the, yeah. on the slick cloth because the cue ball can slide into the hole. And you can bank the one on your or eight on your side. That would yeah. Take care of the cue ball. Keep the heat on. Yeah. I kind of like kicking slow at this eight, just so Conrad's able to keep the balls down here. Because not only is he going to need to outmove Josh to a shot, but he doesn't want to have to do it four times. Okay. Looks like Conrad can kick the eight to his hole. And maybe get position. You'll have a trickle down table for the 11, but that would be quite imaginative. I guess he's just going to move it up table again. I like that Conrad's not trying to push it too much. He's keeping yeah. it pretty simple. He's not trying to, you know, go for too many low percentage shots. He's just see how the game plays out. Hmm. Yeah, Josh uh, Mess push, that up. pushing it a little bit there. Okay, so now Conrad I th looks like he can bank the 8, stop the cue ball yeah. for the 10 and kind of protect the 8. It's a good pace. Hit it pretty good. Yeah. No, it looks like Josh has a shot at it. I think Josh can get under it. What? Well, I'm thinking he can. Okay, maybe. Oh, you think he can actually bank it? I thought so, but apparently not. This is a good shot, though. Productive. Yeah, that was good. He got the ball, got the ball up and out of play. Okay, Josh has a free bank for the win. That was. No, I don't know what he was trying to do with that one. I think he was trying to get it all the way back over by the 8-1. and one. Right. Bank for the win. He hit it nice. Did it? Wow, that kind of oh. looked like it was in the middle, didn't it? Ooh. That really yeah, it looked good for a long, he, long time. Well, he, he hit it inside the pocket, but that's now how Now he's got to follow it in. Right. Right? Yep. This is a hard follow in, isn't it? It's out, out away from the hole a little bit. Oh, perfect. Yep. Now normally I like to I like to shoot the shot where you draw the cue ball and play for the six ball to run through the ten towards the hole mm -hmm. and the ten will go two rails. But I'm not sure the position of the eight ball if the ten mm -hmm. will go over towards the eight. I would say on the, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's just, just safety. He doesn't like that shot, I guess. Out cue ball. Uh oh. Ooh. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. The other ball going in makes this a yeah. different deal. It's easy to lose the cue ball on this table the way it is. It's a little bit a little bit slick. But didn't look like he really took his time on that one. That was an important one. Two balls are sp oh, so he must have made a ball up table somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was that fortunate. Was, that yeah. was fortunate. Otherwise, Josh has a spot shot to win. 
Yeah, here goes Josh doing the same thing. I like that little shot. That's not bad. You know, you get both of them on your side. No, you know. You have very little risk. Yeah, no risk on it. Just, yeah. He's looking for a bank. I mean, you could probably, if you want to, you could kick at the 10 and bank it over there. You might do that. Let's see. Yeah. That was a one-y shot. You're too young to have played two-shot rollout nine ball all the time, right? No, didn't play that. Boy. Well, I, I played, they were spotting balls in nine ball when I first started playing, and then they came up with the Texas Express rules. Mm -hmm. And then we started playing those. But I, I was spotting the balls up, but I don't, I don't think we were playing two-shot push-out. Boy, you would love that game. Yeah. You would have. I heard it was a shot maker's game, though. You could, well, you could run so many more racks because you could afford to take a chance on position because you could always push out. So you could go for a tough shot and then say you don't get the breakout to make the next ball. Then you say, hey, Mark, I'm pushing out at any point in the game. And then you might play safe. I say, go mm -hmm. ahead, Corey, and you play safe. I say, Corey, I'm pushing out. So, so mm -hmm. the games would be somewhat long at times. Mm -hmm. But, and spot shots were part of it, but now you would see three and four racks ran because mm -hmm. you could take that tough shot on without worry about if you don't get the position that you absolutely have to have. Yeah. And then the spot shot being involved, that was a pressure shot. You had to be good at those with high, you know, center, low for a variety of positional plays. So yeah. I really love that. We added another element, but it was slowed the game down some, so it was more of a tactical thing. Yeah. Which suggests Corey Duell's specialty. That'd be interesting to do. Look at that. That hit the point and went right down the rail. Just nudged it. Okay, if I'm Conrad, go ahead and either bank the one and draw back or shoot the ten. Do something. Slicey. Okay. He didn't want to make it. He didn't. He didn't make it. Oh, now. I guess Contrad's just gonna bunt the one over there. No, he went for the bank. Oh, look at that. What a hit that, that was. was. a dangerous shot. Out of shot. nowhere. But it worked. Wow. I think Josh is just tr pretty much trying to wedge these balls at the corner. Just mm -hmm. wedge them up. If I'm Conrad... I think I'm every time I get a shot here I'm gonna be looking to pocket a ball in the corner, have it spot up. Hmm, what a great shot that was. Yeah, that one that one I, I see a little, little something there. It was heading closer to the hole than I thought where it ended up. Yeah, I thought he hit a little better than that. But Sometimes you get a little unlucky and they don't really end up where you hit them, you know? Yeah. The one thing we're seeing a little, maybe not quite the patience we're used to seeing with most of the one pocket players here. I, I would say that both players are being pretty, pretty patient. I mean, this is the first game on a slick table. It's taken a little while. You know, this game could have been over in five minutes. Over slicey. I think Conrad wants to cut the 10 and bump the <laughs> This is a double kiss. Oh, wow. He missed it.
Josh is one. I wonder if he can twist the 10. I don't think he can on the slick table. He's just bank it straight up, straight up and back to the first diamond. Freeze the cue ball and then Just roll the 10 over there by the 8 and just let the cue ball go to the side cushion. You don't have to uh, do he's anything. Ba he's banking it down trying to twist it, but I don't think it'll twist on the table. I don't think the table's going to allow for that to happen. Now, uh, bank shot. Yeah, right. Conrad's got a shot at something here. That was a good shot. I think Conrad's going to get more value out of trying to pocket the 8, 6, and 11. Mm hmm. And freeze the cue ball. If he can pocket the 8 and freeze the cue ball on one of those balls, spot a ball up, start getting the balls down here. That way, if he happens to get a shot, he can right. run a few balls. Right. But bunting this, just bunting one ball around the table. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to beat Josh four times. Mm-hmm. You know. See, like here, maybe he can pocket the six. Freeze the cue ball. I think this is what Tony means by mm -hmm. they're not trying to achieve anything here. They're just trying to right here he could I don't know if he can make the six here. But you gotta put the eleven down there. We almost scratch too. Well Josh definitely doesn't want to make one because he's gonna leave Conrad a spot shot. Yeah. To shoot at. And he doesn't need to make any. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying yeah. to keep him up there, and he's he's th he's thinking, well, Conrad's going to make a mistake sooner or later. And when he does, you know, even if you know Josh would miss a ball, you're only oh, be like able right to there. One. That was almost one because if he would have pocket the eleven, he left Josh straight in. Yep. Interesting. Conrad's, he's doing okay. He's playing the, the, the ball with pace into the other balls and down and bringing the cue ball down here, kind of opening them up. Mm -hmm. And and he's he's doing okay with, I think he just left a, Josh a bank on the six. Josh could be worried that he'll pocket the 11. And if he avoids the 11, then the double kiss is in play type of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking if he can cross the six, bring the cue ball over, but it doesn't look like it's laying good enough. Oh, he's three railing this. Look at this. Oh, he hit it nice. Sure did. Yeah, good That might be too. in. Mm. Oh, man, just slowed up, didn't it? One more donut for breakfast, he would have had that. Yeah. Okay. Well, here we go. This is a nice makeable bank here. Six. Just make sure you favor the right side of the pocket this time, I think. Firm. Hmm. Good cue ball, though. He can lose his mind here. Shoot well, now him. there's a cross bank f for the six. But cue ball's coming up table might leave the 10 and then ten's a little funny to try and bank it's a weird situation that's pretty good will Josh ever two rail to 10 here side mm. rail side rail or just no need to fool with it he might cut it down there, but it, I don't know if he's going to cut it down there to make it. He might just cut it down there just to get it. There's no point. Josh is not in the market of moving balls down table. It's not his job. 
That's Conrad's job. Well, if you could top spin through. I will, ooh, look ooh, at that hit, shot. Hit that. Nice. Wow. Two rails. Like you made the eleven. Uh oh, cut shot. <laughs> cut shot. Now will will Conrad try and run the cue ball into those balls and see if he can shake them up a little bit and uh, yeah. end up with a shot? Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. I don't know if he Maybe some kind scratch. of a bank or something. No, he couldn't beat the scratch. He was worried about the scratch. That was laying. If he would have cut it in, it but the cue ball was going dangerous to the, toward the pocket. I think. Okay, here's your opportunity. Make the 10. Freeze the cue ball on the 6. Going cross corner here. Does he feel good about it? Yeah. yeah he got to hit that ball so thin on the slick table. Well, I think he purposely hit it thick so he made sure he took care of the cue ball there and just yeah. got it on his side. Yeah. That's it's, that's smart of him to do. Oh, if you try and make it, you end up losing the cue ball. If you yeah. scratch there, it's <laughs> now you've lost all your advantage or this almost side. all of it. Another good opportunity. Josh yeah. is getting a lot of good opportunities yeah. here. He's moving the one ball around, which is smart. Mm -hmm. Josh is really, he, he's he got Conrad playing right into his strategy here. Well, and you said it best. <laughs> Josh is not in the business of moving balls down table. <laughs> no. With the score line here. He doesn't need oh, to do that. That one slid on him a little bit. Yeah, he's disappointed. He would have made that out on those other tables, the way he hit it. But that ball just died. Ooh, he's got to be happy. See, now he made the 10. Oh, he almost did. See, that was what we want to do. Make yeah. the 10, freeze on the 6, and then Josh has to come off of it, and all the balls can come up. But Josh is going to make the 10 for him. I don't know about that. I don't think he needed to do that. He could have, Josh could have thinned off the 6, went back up table. But then... Uh, See, I think the balls are going to start going in now. Well, he might have a bank on the eight here. Yeah, this bank on the eight for the win right here. That's nice. It's not that bad, and I think he can control the cue ball well enough. Yeah. So it's primarily cue ball control. Get the eight down by your pocket. Just don't sell out. You got to have enough pace look on out, it so it rolls out. good. Oh, the scratch. That one's straight. Oh, yeah, that was great. good. Yeah. Yeah, so he put enough pace on it where it, it rolled nice into the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. 1-0, Josh Roberts. Looked like a little one-pocket savvy one in that game. Yep. Yeah, he was in control of that end game. The hey, beginning of the game could have went either way. Corey, free $50 for you. If you close your eyes and spell you session. <laughs> I've written it down right I still would bet against myself being able to spell it. <laughs> so many Z's and Y's. <laughs> I don't even want to try that. Yeah, I know. I don't even want to. I, I, I've written it down don't eight even times try. looking at it and I can't remember it. Oh, the beast with a nice bank. and ooh, He knew he was making that, I guess. That's a problem on this. On the table slick like this, after the break, it seems like you just have so many offensive shots. Played that good. Yeah. That yeah, was not an easy speed. combination. You well, could miss that ball. Well, he got good speed on the seven and the cue ball to play for a, a shot. 
Uh, he's looking at caroming into the stack here. If I carry him into the stack, I think I want to catch the bottom of the 13. Mm -hmm. And that way the cue ball goes to the bottom rail and over. Yeah. And you end up getting, see here. Oh, look at that one, right through the 14. Did he get the 13? I Looks think he like got he the did. 11 and the 14. Okay. And the 13. Yeah. And I think the 9 goes. So I think he can shoot the 13, come up for the 9 if he wants. That's helpful. Yeah. The 11 is a dead end road because you go into the 6. Oh, he's yep. getting there, too. Yeah, I got a perfect angle where now he can bump the 8 over a little bit, and he'll have the 15, but he'll have the wrong angle on the 15, and he'll have to do something with that one. See, now... 8 ball? Yeah, the 8 looks like it goes. That's the better shot, the 8. But that wasn't the ball he was playing for. He was playing for the 15. He's shooting the 15, too. I'd shoot the 8 here. Come up towards the 2. Curse. He must know that the 11 goes or the carom off the 14. Hmm. The 11 maybe goes. Or maybe he's just going to move a ball up table now. Well, I think he's going at this 11. Yeah, I, think the 14, I don't know I think what's the next. 14. Maybe no? the 14 next? Well, Flip it, looks it like over? He's, it looks like he is going 11. Oh, the, oh, oh, man. He overcut it. Got away with it, though. Wow. Hmm. Got away with it. Yeah, I can tell. Just he's overcut a few balls, and the the balls are uh, when they're slick like that. When the balls are polished and the table's clean, the balls cut a little cleaner than uh, the outside tables. It's Huge aggressive shot here by banking the 14 off the 8 or 11. Oh, he's got the combo. Nice shot. Oh, that was a good shot. He yeah. Can get out, yeah, he can get out here. They're all laying there. He's got to make sure he misses the 10. I don't know that you can do that. He's got. He, I think he's going to go above the ten, in between the ten and the corner, which is a scary shot. But he hit it perfect. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. If he got the eight here, it would be one one. Well, he's got the eight, but it's a little straight. He can cut he can the cut ten cut. if he doesn't like it. I mean, he doesn't have to. Yeah. He felt like he could get out here. Yeah. He he had nice pace on that. Now he's got a perfect angle. To get on the fourteen if he wants. And playing for three. Yep. How are you stacking up in this one pocket event? Oh, I'm. I'm. Just, I think. I think I probably forfeited my match because I'm over here commentating with you. So oh, all right. I'll probably be out here in a second. Let me check. Make sure I didn't forfeit. I've been calling my sponsor and telling him the good news that I didn't forfeit this round. <laughs> Every round. <laughs> He's very relieved. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Game ball here. Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm TBD. Right. TBD means to be wait dirty. around for a while. That's right. Do a couple commentaries. Yeah. One pocket the game with 429 players this week. Yeah, last night they said it was going to be a redraw at 10. And you could play at 11. And I played 11 p.m. match. So I really didn't know what to do. And I, I wasn't really ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, should I wake up and see what my time is, and then go back to sleep. And then once I woke up, I was ready to be up. So, well, yeah, let me just go over there. I might play right away. Now it looks like I could have slept in. Now there's a ball made on ball the break. On the, so we you see, I like, I like that to just go ahead and count. And me too. Yeah. But, and race to three, it's a, it's a, little, a little bit tough.
Laid down a good break there. Yeah, nothing real obvious here, is it, for a aggressive shot? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you could bank the three and go up table or something, but. That was interesting. See, I would have shot the same shot, but followed the cue ball up towards the nine. And uh, Josh is looking at hitting the 12, four, maybe off the six or something, kind of trying to push the balls to his hole. But it, I think it could be. A, mm hmm. He could lose. He could lose the balls. Like these balls could could go weird places. Cute. I don't know where the eight's going. Can he super thin the six and just go to the far corner pocket down there? I think that's Maybe what he's going to do. Yeah. Well, I don't think he got oh, there. Oh, he hit it a little weak. That's well, a big mistake. A hair too thick. Yeah, that's a big mistake. That needs to be. You're not going to run out from the shot that he played, so you got to make sure the cue ball's your priority no matter what if you're going to play Yeah, this. I think he just hit a little fat. You know, you and he expected he did, yeah. it to come around. Okay. Well, what's next, though? 11 ball? 11 ball. This guy can make anything from anywhere. It's well, I, 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 I think he can get down on the 6. I just don't know if the anything goes out of the stack. I mean, the 8 could possibly go off the 12. He can maybe bank the 9 after the 6 if he's yeah. down there good. No, nope, overcut it. Well, Josh. Got the cue ball safe, yeah. which is, I feel like, a little bit fortunate. I don't think he was trying to do that. I think he was trying to run the cue ball into the nine and and have a shot on the six. Okay. And you can play the six into the nine, but the problem is it's hard to move the cue ball very much. Mm-hmm. With that shot. You almost have to stop the cue ball to make that shot work. Yeah. Oh, he got the cue ball over by the four, but here comes the nine. Man, that was going to be good all the he way. He hit to it the last really good. He did. It is just, it just, that the nine speed. had just enough pace to get out there. Uh, Josh can bank, make this and bank the 11. If he makes the 11, he can start making some things work here. I don't know if he can go up for the six ball or just float up slowly for the three. If you're going for the three, you tend to hit this bank too fat. So. Oh, that slid in there nice. Look at that. Cue ball got away a little. Yeah, I think it was one or the other on that bank. I guess you had to either let it go or... Yeah, look at that. That's a nice oh, hit. hit that he real good, too. Tangles that up. I don't think he even wanted to make that. He's no. just playing the cue ball into the stack. Right. I mean, you might as well four rail the 15 now and draw the cue ball. Yeah. Go ahead and run out. Just make sure there's nothing going back to Conrad's pocket. He's looking at it. Yeah, he's just going to... I kind of like th just thin the 15 and go up table. You just get the cue ball a big distance. Yeah. And nothing really goes in Conrad's pocket. Okay, this is this is good because he's leading the game, and and get the key, keep the cue ball down here. You're starting to push balls out of play. You know, this is a pretty free. I think the four chance. off the one goes from here. He can kick at that four. Mm-hmm. It's aggressive. I mean, there's some bad things that can happen, but that's what he's looking at. And kicking on the slick table can get away from him, too. He's going to two-rail the 12, I think. Got to watch out for the 8. And left to bank on the 3. Nope, not anymore. Bank on the 5. Hmm. Free yeah, bank on the 5. Not what he wanted to have happen. Does 5 just follow out? Just look at... And just a little further, I would have thought he should have played that with a little more pace, let the cue ball come another diamond away from this long rail. You can bank the eight next, or you can open stuff towards your pocket. Yeah, that was just that slick tables catching him off guard a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know 
what he's looking at here. I don't know if he's looking at trying to. Tell you what I like here is maybe if you can bank the 12 over and stick the cue ball in the stack. Get the 12 on your side. No, I think he, you can just lag up on top of the 12 and let the 10 go over there to the 5. Yeah. The only problem is, is I think the 3 goes, so if the cue ball squeaks right. out a little bit. you got to be careful then. If if that if the 3 goes, then maybe I that's not very good. I think the 3 goes. Okay. I was just thinking that 10 on the 5, boy, a lot of good things happen if it gets up there slow. And if you can yeah. tuck the cue ball into that stack. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, oh wow, it was dead. Look at that. It wasn't dead. I mean, well, I mean, it went in like it was dead. It looked like it was. Lord. Yeah, man. He, that was he a ton of run. risk. He knocked the ball in Josh's pocket, and then they clattered together down there. He could have easily sold out there if that doesn't go. And <laughs> yeah, a lot that of things was, had that to happen. Was a right? wild shot. He really didn't take too much time to look at it either. <laughs> no, caught us off guard. That's, like That's the thing. When I get up there playing on a shot clock like this. And it comes time, and I want to try and look at like some combinations if they go. It takes a little while to figure them out, you know. Mm -hmm. But he just jumped up at that one and just let it swing. All right, here's another that was look. A cool shot. I almost think he maybe he looked at that previous. Yeah, it was laying. I mean, it was it laying was good, but it still it'll take you a little while to look at it. Oh, a little short. You got the eight frozen, which is, makes it nearly impossible to bank. I don't see any combinations for Josh. Just two, just two rail it over on his side, I guess. Yeah, he's just going to two rail it over. Three rail it, I guess. Yep. Seven ball. Hmm. Leaving oh. the cue ball on the side, the opposite side of the stack, then yeah. then the one you need to usually isn't that good. I don't know if the the ten one combinations on from here, but yeah, when you say usually, it's rarely good to leave it on the wrong side of the stack. It just yeah. almost never works out with pros. Well, it looks like he's gonna try and twist this from here. He might be able to twist it a little bit. No. See, it's not picking up any spin. He's trying to get that object ball to have a little spin where it yeah. moves closer to so the hole. He sold out the three, even. I mean, that was... Uh, oh, he did. Yeah, he lost the cue ball. Then he was trying to draw it back a little more. This is right... Ooh. Rolled uphill a little bit. He maybe, had that. Yeah. That, that could have been a devastating shot if he makes it because he's got the tw 12, yeah. 2, 7. The 1... Wow, I mean, wow, look at that. Josh just froze the cue ball in the 10. That's nice. See, now, if I'm down in the game, oh, mm -hmm. well, you can't take the scratches, can you? Yeah, you can take scratches. See, if I'm down in the game and a guy freezes me there on the 10 ball, normally I would take a couple scratches first because my opponent's going to take a scratch too. So now it, it, it takes Josh from four to two. It would take take both players maybe down to down to two to zero. And two to zero is a little bit better I than four to two. Yeah, prolong the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of put the odds a little bit back in your favor by doing that. That was an interesting shot. I mean, he left the three hanging in the in his opponent's pocket, knowing that he can get the cue ball mm -hmm. in a position where he's not going to leave a shot. That's a and and only playing for one. It takes a lot of faith in your ability to be able to pull that off. He might have actually left the three though. He didn't pull it off, did he? No. Yeah, I would have to question that. 
shot selection by Josh. I don't know if he can stick the cue ball there and have a cut at the one. Or maybe follow the cue ball. Well, he's going 12 ball. His oh, wow. Drew it over. Drew it. <laughs> uh, overpowered the shot, too. Yeah. He has a powerful draw stroke. He wow. gets action on the ball. He gets that cue ball so pure. Yeah. I don't know if he left... He might have hooked himself on this eight now, which would be a big, big no-no. Yeah, it appears so. It looks like he can get to the bottom rail. If he can get to the bottom rail and glance off the top of the eight, he can actually bank the eight over towards his pocket a little bit. Oh, just cut the one in. Amazing. Hooked himself again. <laughs> yeah, forcing himself to shoot yet again. No, I think he can make the eight now. Yep. Well, that was an interesting inning. Yeah. All right. Okay, now it's back 5-5. Five, five, tie ball game. Just like the last rack. See, I like that. When you have balls on both sides and the cue ball froze, mm -hmm. it's like... Right. You have to look at it for a while before you figure out what to do. You really put some heat on your opponent, no doubt. Boy, that's a nice hit. Hit that pretty good. All right, beast. You better get something by your pocket here. Yeah, I like, you know, just just get the one, get the eleven down there. Pass the, just get it to go just past the ten and try and hook your opponent behind the ten. I don't think he's going to shoot the combo four or seven. If if you if you freeze the cue ball in the middle of diamond, mm -hmm. I think you can. You're allowed to go for this. Yeah, perfect. Right there, he hit it nice. You don't want it all the way down by the hole because it's easy to kick out. Kind of just like right, right there is pretty good. Okay. Now this ten, it looks like you can maybe twist it. <sighs> Remind me not to try and twist the banks on the slick table when mm -hmm. I play on it. Yeah, it just doesn't grab. It's not looking good, is it? Well, this is going to be an interesting game now. 5-5, five, five, and the balls are kind of neutral. Okay. Looks like Josh is going to take a short player timeout. Oh, okay. All right. Back in action. He's two railing it, just like you suggested he might do. Nice two railer there. Okay. Yeah, if that chipped up in the seven there, that would have been really productive. Yeah. Got it right in front of the side where it's tough to move it. Good cue ball there, frozen. He's going to have a ball on the spot. Remember the time, Linda Wood, when you figured out how to make all seven stripes out of the rack on the, on the break? Remember me and you were fooling that I was going to do that commercial? That they wanted me to make all seven stripes, and I said, oh, you can't do it. And you started tinkering with the rack and got it to work. Did because. we ever did we you do did. it? Yeah, we did you it? did. Took you four hours, but you got it. But now it wasn't a completely official rack, of course, but yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I like the one where Dr. Q, like, he gets it where he can make the eight every time on the break. 
but he, he gets the rack all goofed up. Uh huh. Yeah. I never saw him do that. Yeah, he's got it. He's he. I've seen it. Uh, huh. It's pretty pretty neat. Well, I think you'd have to have a pretty novice to let you rack them like that. But just since we're seeing how the balls work, though, you got all seven stripes to go. Look at this. That's not a great effort. It's a little bit funny. I don't know if it crosses, and I don't know if it holds. It doesn't look like it's right. cross. It's like you have to hold it. Well, I think he can pop this in. I mean, he can miss it too, of course. But it hit it nice. Yeah. That was really that was a tough shot. And it, oh, absolutely. And that, that kind of plays. Josh hits those good. It's stiff enough. Yeah. Well, he needs two. Now he's got this bank on the ten, but can't stop the cue ball right there because this this seven thirteen right. combo is very makeable. And if you don't make the if you don't bury the bank on the ten, a lot of times you leave a cross yeah. corner. You might too. shoot it firm and follow up. Kind of like a bank pool shot. Mm-hmm. You see what you're saying? Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. So it's going to lead the what? Oh, okay. that was interesting. It didn't it even was. look like he was shooting at it. Looked like he was just right. kind of playing safe. Now, I like three rail in this 10 ball. Yeah. Uh, now, it's going to go long, so you have to factor yeah, that in. Yeah. Well, you hit it good. He didn't hit it hard enough to protect it behind. And they needed to get the cue ball forward a little more. <clears throat> but if he hits it a little harder, I think he's yeah. yeah. looking at his three balls there that he needed. It's just such a big difference if you can protect the ball or you don't. You know? Mm-hmm. I like how Conrad's getting down and, and just shooting right away. Even though you would think that he doesn't know the game that well, but he's playing it like, oh, I know what to do here. And just You see a lot mm -hmm. of players that don't play a lot of one pocket, and they, they would be looking at these shots longer, kind of like, you know. Oopsie. Hmm. That was a little, uh, maybe it was a little unlucky that he um, mm -hmm. he caught that ball, I think. That ball, the ball that he caught that ended up scratching. It was like a time shot. It was moving. John Schmidt says, uh, his wife says, uh, oh, he sewered. He sewered. <laughs> yeah, she calls a cue ball in the pocket. He sewered. Yeah. Hey, game ball here. Yeah, Josh, man, he was funny. The last match we did together, he goes like this. He was talking about, well, Tony Johan would uh, do a kick carom here, and it's pretty uh -huh. safe. Yeah. And he would have hit that without even thinking about it while he was texting. <laughs> you know? While he's texting. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how Tony plays, he's the most relaxed yeah, yeah, guy yeah, ever. Yeah. Shuffled around the table there. Yeah. Get up <laughs> one stroke at one handed, probably. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He'd be bored to death. Looks like he's bored to death. Uh -huh. We're drumming on somebody. You know. Yeah. Seventy five sponsors on this shirt. NASCAR <laughs> racers are jealous of yeah. <laughs> Tony's uh -huh. listing. Well he's you know. He's got that shirt, that that thing. It is it is pretty packed packed with sponsors. <laughs> Doesn't dare lose any weight. You have to give up two sponsors if he had a smaller <laughs> shirt. I think in the fact that most of the time he doesn't tuck it in. Uh huh. So that that makes for like even more room. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, it's elongated. It comes down though. He's got the most real five. estate of anyone for sponsors. <laughs> and how do you not love the guy? He's just the most relaxed guy yeah. ever. Uh oh, man! I would love to kick at that twelve nine, but yeah, but this, but that, <laughs> the eight, it's still there. Yeah, 
Uh, he's playing the one off the six mm -hmm. to his and hole and draw the cue ball and, and mess up the four nine. Love yeah. that. Love that shot. And you might say, well, he should have hit it harder. But you couldn't control the cue ball. You had to get the cue ball to lodge up here good. Two to one is our score. Josh Roberts in front. But they've been pretty hotly contested games. Uh, it looks like Yusheshin wants to bank at that one. But, oh, my. Look at this shot now. And, good Lord, there's no way I can be limber enough to do all that. I don't even think he can. Yeah, better give up on that one. How about two rail the, or just one rail the three come across? I think he can do that, right? Yeah. One rail on the three, follow him between the ten and seven. He's drawing it back. Drawing it. Well, that's good enough, too. Shoo. Wow. Go. Wow. Good control. How about that? Now, does the two go? Does the four go? Looks like the two goes for sure. And then two that would goes. open up the 10, so yeah. you could play the 11 next. Yeah, if you can follow full and the No, the, the four goes. Okay. Okay. Then the There two. you see how easy he hit it and how much draw. Oh, he didn't get yeah. that great on this. Now, I don't know if he's... I don't know if he can smooth follow this and, and get position. He's, he's, he's elevating a, a little yeah, bit. Stunning into the 10. Yeah. Hit it perfect. Mm. Didn't uh, get what he wanted. Might have a bank on the one. Yeah. It's pretty free. I don't know if you take the cue ball into the 14 or you just take the cue ball up table. I think I like taking the cue ball all the way up table better. Mm hmm. He went for yeah. the 14. Yeah. Well, he's got good cover with that. I don't think he left a bank, unless the 15 banks, but... Doesn't look like it does. Yeah, maybe. We could bank See. the 11 and leave him up table in a long combination, but you'd hate to give this guy a long shot. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just, oh, the 15 goes. Yeah, and yeah. he's sort of looking to yeah, shoot it's, anyway. It's, I mean, any of these banks, if you, you want to bet the game on them, they're makeable. So these are on this table. All the banks like that are mm -hmm. are banks. You ask yourself, would I bet the game on this? Oh yeah. Yeah, the answer for Josh Roberts on that last one was yes. It's yes. But he's looking to glance off either the twelve or the nine, and he'll have a shot on either ball. Top of them. Oh man, brutal. He ain't that good. Still got a shot at the 11. I would try and run the cue ball into the 7. You should have a shot on the 5. Or the 6. Or the 13. I think he's trying to hit yeah. the 7 with I think them. so. Yeah, I think you're right. He's up on, Ooh. on the Brunswick. Who knows where. <laughs> on the, let's get the 1 out of the pocket. Uh-oh. Man, that was weird how that came off. I thought he hit it okay. He must have hit ball first. There. It looked like he was. It looked like he hit it the way he wanted to. Yeah, like if he hits rail first, he's supposed to stick. I was a little bit worried if he hits it really full, that you could follow the cue ball into the pocket. But the way that that cue ball just really bounced off the rail, it looked like mm -hmm. he almost hit ball first. Now that was a tough shot to get position on. I might not even tried it. I might have rolled that in and tried to play the nine twelve bank because it looks really. Mm hmm Good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. See, so acting like... Bank you know. the eight, stop the cue ball. What do you think? Yeah. Stop the cue ball right there. Well, he's playing the 13. Okay. Got a double kiss. Avoid that. Put the cue ball over there. Move the seven. Mm-hmm. Now, this is dangerous... Because Josh has got to move the seven, but he's gonna he's gonna no matter what give up this bank combo on the nine unless if he just moves it. I would move the nine now. You got to go off the nine here somehow. I think. Yeah, the nine. Well, he's the looking at the seven, and I'm just worried that that nine nine. No, he got the cue ball down there. Okay, that's better. He didn't give it up. 
that's a better shot. Ooh, I don't know about this. I hit that pretty good. I think the the bank the eight banks now. Well, the cue ball is going to be hot when it comes out of there. Run the cue ball into the 10. Yeah. He had shape on the 5, too. Yeah. If he made it. How did he do? A little bit long. I'd be licking my chops to shoot that 9-12 combo bank. Mm-hmm. It yeah. looks good. Yep. Especially with a little helper down there. Yeah. Josh is in a tough spot He's here. He's thinking about kicking the eight. He is, yeah. Kicking the eight, and then he can maybe bank the five. He's got it up there. He might have froze it where it might not bank, but that's such a big pocket. You can way thin overcut this with, with power and a little bit of inside spin, and it's pretty free. You get it anywhere yeah. close, it's in. So five. That's what I was yeah. thinking. It's available. All right. Well, looks like Conrad should be able to take care of this game. If he can get this cue ball up table, I would rail first this and spin around. Mm. And I did that. Hit that way heavy. That was a, it didn't look like he finished his backswing on that one. Looked like a little bit shorter. Uh -huh. That particular shot. Could two rail the 13 and bring the cue ball up. I think he's just gliding along here, top spin. Yeah, just cut it over there, huh? That, that ball was cuttable. I think he could have cut that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was makeable. That was good. Got both of those on his side. And that was a good shot. Uh oh, cue ball. That was nice, really nice there. <laughs> he didn't take many strokes, does he? No, no, he's a fast player for sure. One, he's one the, go. the commentator's dream. He's a pure shot maker and, and then he plays fast. So. Yeah. Saying stop, Watch stop, where, stop, where's this going? stop. It did. It'd be awful to scratch there when you, <laughs> you're on seven with that shot. Sometimes you end up in a spot where you can scratch. That was one you didn't have to scratch. These, uh, these guys, I'll tell you, their pace to be able to hang the cue ball into the pocket is uh, really good. Uh, no. They've got, like, no. inch pace. <laughs> hang, no. <laughs> hanging, they're trying to hang the cue ball. In the <laughs> yeah, okay. Those of you at home, <laughs> don't try this <laughs> at home. These no. guys are not this good at hanging the cue ball. He almost sewered the last two shots. Didn't try to get it near his pocket, just on his side down table. Just to have yeah. a little something going on. But when you leave it there, there's banks. He can bank this seven for the win. Kicking in behind the 13 here, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right? Well, you better believe Josh is going to be bringing something down this way every shot. Somehow. I'm trying to get... Uh-oh. That'll be all. That is it. Game ball here. And it's going to be two games apiece here. Down to the final rack. What's been happening in California for you? Not a whole lot. Just playing a little bit. And um, I'm going to be taking a trip to Poland, actually. Play the World Nine Ball. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I've never been to Poland. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Be there for four or five days. So. Nice break. Oof. Yeah, this yeah, is most unpleasant break. here. Yeah, I think he's he's hoping he could see the ball, <laughs> right? Oh, he's gonna play. I know, but I'm just. I saying. don't know what he's doing here, but he's in a hurry to do it. And that shot he opened up the match with that was, was a great shot. Playing. Whatever yeah. it was, I mean, he just looked at it for two seconds. Great shot. Josh gonna go off the five, spin behind the twelve, maybe. That's not an easy shot to hit, though. That's a lot That's of trouble. That's tough, yeah. Well, he did a great Ooh, job with this. it. Perfect. Man. Excellent. Yeah, and, and it's such a big difference if you can get the cue ball up under the 12. Mm -hmm. you, you take away the kick. See, he's about to kick up table. Mm -hmm. if, if, if Josh gets that an extra inch under the 12, now it's a two-rail kick to get out of it. In any event, uh, Conrad's in big trouble here. Big trouble. He's got to make a real shot. Yeah, he's going to have to kick the cue ball almost, pretty much kick the cue ball towards the pocket. And uh, he's going to have to have that pace like he had the last game where they just hang it up. Mm, it's not going to come out of that good. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Maybe it did. Well, it might keep him off of it for the moment, but it, it, he's not uh, accomplished much, and Josh's going to end up the best of this deal. Josh's going to lock it down. He can even take a foul here. He doesn't have to do anything. Just preserve this position. He's looking at, at playing the seven into the eight, off the three, into the six, into his pocket or something. Yeah. Or bank the 12. I think he's yeah. reaching for a little too much. I don't think he needs all this, like you said. He could have just... Could have just fouled, kept him frozen on the ball. Now he just left Conrad a little mm -hmm. air to get out of the mm -hmm. trap. Right. Right. Yeah. That's going to be a foul, but uh, it was a worthy one. Yeah. Now he got him out of the out of the trap. Right. Now I see Josh. Josh likes to play these like a like two ball into the mm -hmm. seven off the eight, firm it. Ooh. You know what? I don't know what he was doing. Okay, there. he was playing like a Tony shot where you go off the end rail into the point and comes across. I don't know if you ever watched Tony play that, but he is wicked good at it. I thought he was shooting it in the hole and trying to just go up table. No, he wasn't doing that. If he, I don't know if we get the replay, but have you mm -hmm. ever seen Tony hit that? It hits the end rail, hits the point, and comes back to his pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's wicked good. Maybe he learned good. that from Tony. Maybe, yeah. He just hit yeah. it a little bit too thin in that slippery table. Out the outer table, he probably hit it about right. Oh, boy. Oh, this is big trouble here. Yeah. Now everything's changed. Oh, yeah. Now the eight got weird. I don't know if the eight goes. Yeah, the eight got weird. <laughs> yeah. And the three four combo looks like it goes, but it's not right. straight it's in. Not it's right. funny. And it's the 10 yeah. doesn't pass the three, and the six doesn't pass the three. Is he going to try to break these out? Oh, I thought he was. Yeah. Now he got on the wrong side of both combos. Huh. The 4 3 doesn't go from there. Yeah. I think the 8 does go. 
the eight. You know what? If you kick into the back, if you go rail first on the 13, you can eight. bump the three out, maybe. Oh, look at that. Open them up. Not enough. I don't know if the four <laughs> goes, does it? Yeah. Well, it's hard to tell. But yeah. it's tight at the very best. You know, he may bake the nine. <laughs> just uh, gamble. I know it's not the right shot. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, if it was sitting a little bit easier, I'd say I bet my game on that one, but. It's a little funny. Hmm. You can't really just concede the 14 and leave the cue ball down there. So you've got to do something. I think you could, you could also maybe play the 9 rail first into the 14 and draw the cue ball up by the 12. There you go. That's a good one. And then that's the 9 kind of comes over. Right. But you got to hit that good. You know, that's that's something you got to hit it real good. It's not like a simple shot. Right. Uh, well, the 14's in the pockets are deep. Could, if it wasn't so deep, that yeah. would be way better shot. But I don't mind it. banking this ball. Play, bet the game on the bank. If you can get the cue ball, I'll tell you, if you can get the cue ball to go off the bottom rail between the 6 and 11 up table, you're not leaving anything dead easy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to have to play a. I don't think the 11 passes to the 14, and and if you can't see the 6, then it's uh, that's asking a lot. Betting the game on this shot. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see where he got the cue ball. He didn't leave yeah. anything really easy here. That was uh, that wasn't that bad. Like yeah. the, the track, the cue balls on there is leaving a long combo. Well, one thing for sure, Josh is real happy to be <laughs> two yeah. to one behind in this rack I, and I shooting. Think, I think um, I think he can shoot the fifteen as long as he's not going to scratch. He's looking at that eight. I think he's looking at Karam in the or four. Eight, I'm four. sorry, four. Yeah, yeah, playing the three and Karam the four over there. Hmm. Tricky situation if you're Josh. I mean, think about it, Josh. You got a ball hanging in your hole. How about just, how about just thin that ball by his hole and go up table? You're probably in a good position from there. You know, thin the 13 over. He's go time. He's going. Yeah, hit it perfect. Look at the three coming around too. Wow. That's quite helpful. Okay. And you can finish up the match here. I might take a little time on these though. Yeah. <laughs> I might agree. Such an important match. It's got the 15, I think. Can, looks like he can shoot the 6 and not hit the 10 and come across one rail, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yep, five needs three, so. Just going to ease it across. Overcut, Overcut it. it. By quite a bit, too. No final pause. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah, yeah. He hit that one like he was hoping to get out rather than he's playing to get out. I think he just, I think that, that whole run right there, he was... Moving too fast, you know. You you can take a little more time than that. I mean, you are under shot clock, but it's a sixty-second shot clock. I mean, yeah. Come on, you got plenty of time to take your time to run those. Yeah. Well, that's short. You can shoot in haste and then repent in leisure. He's gonna bank stop mm -hmm. this cue ball and freeze it on the ten. Get one over by. Uh oh, he drew the cue ball back. He drew it back three inches, and now he's <laughs> Josh left have Josh a combo, a combo on Maybe. the six. Well, Maybe. for sure. Maybe not. It, may, it might not be laying And down. he can play the cue ball into the 12. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He can do it with some measure of control. No, he's not. No. He's not doing any of that. He's not he don't want. He don't want to. I don't think it's any good. I think no, I great. think it's too tough, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's too tough. He's looking at it. Uh-oh, here we go. 
He might just go all out and play the combo and then kick the 12 his way. That's what I mean. Play the cue ball. Not freeze it. I'm saying into go ahead. it. Yeah. That's the only way you can get enough pace, probably. Yeah, but see, he's running out of time. The time it would take for him to look at that shot and hit it well, he only had 10 seconds. Yeah. Bank the five and follow up table. But the one goes. The one does go. Bank the six, run into the 10. That looks pretty good. A little inside English, I think. But the table's so slick, it might slide past the 10 and you're done. All right. He's doing this. The one goes. Oh, wow. Yeah, just lost the cue ball. He didn't get the cue ball. Even if he got the cue ball down, froze, that's not that hard of a shot. Mm-hmm. On this table. Okay, take your time on this one, Josh. This is it. Game winner. Oh, man. Yep. Oh, now Conrad's playing for three. Yeah, Conrad gets out here. We got a... Uh, we have a hill hill match. We already have a hill hill that match. Pretty good. Oh, it is hill hill right now. I didn't even notice that. Good shot. Needs one. Wow. He's going to bank the one. Match ball. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That match had a lot of twists and turns. Both wow, players had chances. Crazy. Yeah. Man, Josh is probably kicking himself with that one. Yeah, just I don't know what happened there on that last ball. He, uh, you know, I really think that uh, because uh, Conrad plays so fast, I think Josh has picked up his pace too because he yeah, started shooting fast. Yeah, that happens. Doesn't? You start play, you play against a fast player and you start rushing around too. Yeah, it can take you out of your rhythm. Well, well it's a good match. Good match. Uh, this has see, been an see. AccuStats video presentation. The worldwide leader in billiards programming. That is our time for this time. Until next time, so long. <laughs>